welcome back to Learn to Play. My name is Julie, and for those of you that are new here, thank you for joining me. Today, I just kind of wanted to give you guys an update on what's going on with the center, with the home daycare, and just kind of do like a little mini review of how this past year has gone. Now, seeing that it's almost the end of the year, I don't know whether to be happy, sad, both. I don't know, guys. This has been a crazy ride this past year. So many things have happened, and yeah, I just, you know, I'm trying to make the best of it. This is definitely, I thought where I'm at like right now, I would be in a little bit different position, but I'm not. So let's just like, let's just start talking about it and let's just get it out of the way. So with the center, I have decided to reopen come this May. Um, I received an offer from the management company that I literally just could not refuse. I did toy for a little bit on did I really want to accept the offer because I'm heartbroken. I'm heartbroken that this center hasn't worked out in the way that I thought it was going to work out thus far. Um, you know, back in March when I got those keys, I was so excited. My dream of 26 years was finally coming true and I put everything I had into the center. Money-wise, time-wise, love-wise, just my heart and soul has gone into creating this childcare center and when things don't go as planned in life, it is, you know, the setbacks can be heartbreaking. The setbacks can take an emotional toe on you. Um, I have had good days, bad days, you know, some days both. <laughs> but I want to stay positive. I want to believe that everything happens for a reason. I want to believe that this opportunity that I've been given with the management company, that it's just confirming that no, like what I have here is a good product. What I have here is worth fighting for um you know because nothing in life comes easy like if you're not willing to fight for it and i think that's one of the tough lessons that i've learned these past couple of months is like you really have to fight for what you want and i started like thinking like what were some of the things that i could have changed with this center not being successful the first go around now granted i was only open two months but Let's get into that. Why was I open only two months? So I got the keys back in March and this building, I'll like insert clips and stuff throughout this video, um, needed a lot of love. It cost so much more than I ever could have anticipated. And I was maybe naive in that like part of it, like that perspective that, oh, it's gonna cost me like 10 grand and I'm gonna get this building up and running. No, it was like 50 grand. <laughs> and so that was definitely, you know, money taken away from the nest egg that I had saved for, you know, rent and insurance and utilities and staff and stuff like that. Um, so when it was time to finally get licensed in August, we ran into some hiccups with that that I had mentioned in like previous videos about permits and stuff like that. So once everything was done, it was like, okay, go. Like we're literally opening the next day. And I don't think I ever like gave myself that time that I needed to like transition from getting the center ready and doing all of, not decorating per se, but like decorating and like getting the center ready to business mode. Okay. Like now this is a business. Now this is how it needs to be like moving forward. And I thought I had the, the right director in place. And looking back, I mean, she's a wonderful woman. I'm not going to like say anything negative about her because obviously I hired her for a reason. But I don't think that we were on the same page on roles. Now, I was still at the home daycare full time. My sister came here with a director and then ended up hiring a third person because of the director's hours, you know, my sister was opening, the director was working, I don't know, nine to three, nine to five, I don't even know what hours really. And then, so I had to have a second person in here as well with my sister and cost wise, it literally did not make sense. We have like four kids enrolled and I'm paying three people like that never should have happened. Um, and you know, we were having tours come in weekly and for whatever reason, we were not getting the signups. 
And since I couldn't be here and really see with my own like two eyes what was going on, what was the disconnect, I just had to kind of rely on what my director was saying. Like, you know, she was calling them back. She was doing this, doing that. And I don't know, you know, and I told my sister, I said, like, how were the tours going? Like, you know, was she enthusiastic? Was she, you know, like presenting it like, okay, let's sign up today, blah, blah, blah. And my sister said she was just kind of like monotone, just kind of like, this is this room, this is this room. And one of the lessons that I've taken away from this is that, and I knew this, but I didn't implement it. Like, no one's going to sell your product like you are. No one is going to sell um, your business like you are. No one's going to have that same passion. No one's going to have that same love. You know, as much as my sister even loves like the home daycare and stuff like that, it's not her dream. It's not, you know, in a sense, it is kind of a paycheck. In a sense, it is kind of, okay, we get to work together. We're sisters. We have so much fun together. But at the end of the day, it's not her dream. It's my dream. So that's one of the things that I'm really taking into the second go around with the center is that, no, I need to step up. And I had to come up with a game plan, I had to start thinking, okay, what needs to change then? Because I can't be in two places at once. And so I've made the decision that I'm gonna be closing my home daycare in April so that I can be here full time when the center opens. Now, in order to do so, I need to downsize my house because the reason why I'm in the house that I'm in is because of the home daycare. I mean, I picked that house specifically to start a home daycare in. And so that is one of the things that I'm looking at, you know, I can take the money from that um, and help, you know, wait out the period until we have, you know, a good substantial amount of kids enrolled. Um, and I always wanna be real with you guys, you know, I'm not a millionaire, I'm not rich. I mean, I'm not poor by any means, but I definitely, you know, money is an issue and starting any business, you have to be able to have that money to ride it out. Had I had perhaps more money to ride out these first few months, you know, who knows what position I'd be in right now, but that just wasn't the reality back then. Because in order for me to, I needed to be at the home daycare to make that money to help support the center. So it's kind of like a catch 22 in a sense. So I've made the decision, like I said, to end the home daycare in April. My sister and I will come here full time starting in May. I will bring on a director, but only part time because in our state, the director only needs to be here part time. So I'm hoping that through like May, June, July, August, through those summer months, somebody would be okay with just coming on board part time and then reevaluate in the fall whether to go full time or not, depending on student wise. Because I'm not going to pay myself. I will go back to nursing on the weekends. I mean, luckily, I have that in my back pocket. I have that skill set that it does, you know. Um, I do make pretty good money as a nurse and so I will be paying my sister and a part-time director and go from there. I am sad about leaving the home daycare. It's going to be about four years. I started it four years ago this is June. So it'll be just a little like a month shy of four years that I've been doing it and I still have my original families all but two original families. Um, and those kids are getting ready to start kindergarten. So I didn't know if there was even going to be like transition times this summer where I was going to be losing families and have to gain new families. But in the end, this center is my baby. In the end, the home daycare was always put in place to get me where I'm at right now, to get me my own center. That was always the goal. Um, and so now I know that I just need to take ownership of this. I need to step up. And not that I wasn't stepping up before, but I... I don't know if I was just like, oh, I'll just be the owner and it'll run, you know, with a director and this and that. And it's clearly that did not work out. <laughs> and I look back and reflect back when I opened up my home daycare. So I was nursing full time. We moved into the house we're in now. Um, like I said, knowing that I was going to do home daycare there, I got the basement ready. And then I quit nursing in May and I opened up my home daycare June 4th with two kids. And I had kids on a waiting list that weren't born yet <laughs> that wouldn't start until that following December, which I've talked about. Don't ever do that. I'm <laughs> like, or unless you charge the families like a monthly fee or still like a weekly fee because I lost so much money by holding spots. But I think back about how I opened it blindly with two kids and had faith that 
me leaving nursing was gonna pay off with a home daycare. And within six months, my sister was with me full time. We had a waiting list and we've had a waiting list ever since. So I am trying to hold on to that hope like, okay, I know that I've made the home daycare successful and it was because of the love that I put in it. It was because I was the one selling the program. I was the one there operating the program. And so I need to give that same love and attention to the center. So, you know, things are going to be happening. We're downsizing our house to make it happen. We, you know, I'm going to go back to nursing on the weekend. So I'm essentially going to be working seven days a week. Who knows for like a year? I don't know, like however long it takes because that's how much this means to me and I don't want to give it up. Um, I started doing like open play here back in maybe like early November um, I took out like the cribs and the cots and stuff like that. I put everything in storage and I'm going to give you like a little tour right now of like what it looks like, but I did start doing open play. I did, um, some events here. Like I did Grinchmas here. I did, um, some other like, like Jungle Terry and stuff like that. Some other events and they've had pretty good turnouts. The open play has definitely died down. So I think I'm just going to be done with that come the new year because it's really not worth me sitting here six, eight hours for two or three kids to come through the door. And now that I know I'm going to go back to the center, there are things looking around that I want to revamp. I do want to, um, make this facility be the best that it can be. And I'm not talking like, Luckily, I don't really need to spend any more money into it. It's just maybe like tweaking some things and moving some things around and just taking a really hard look on what do I want my center to represent because I'm going to be the one selling it this time. I'm going to be the one giving the tours. I'm going to be the one that hopefully brings, you know, that brings families together, that bring them in here and that it can be successful. So that's kind of where we're at with that. Um... I've been doing birthday parties here just, you know, cause I wanted to get the buzz out about the center. I wanted to get the traffic in here and I've had very positive, you know, results with that. People love the center and I'm just ready to like give it a my all to, you know, actually make it the childcare center that I envisioned and that I've been waiting so many years to create. So with that being said, a whole mouthful, <laughs> even know if I breathe during saying all of that. Um, let me flip the camera around. Let's just give you a quick tour and show you what's going on in here, show you some of the changes that I'm thinking about making. And yeah, all right, let's get started. Okay, starting in the preschool room, I did add a train table. You guys, I think it's missing a piece because we've tried to put it together. I know originally my son-in-law, I'm pretty sure at one point he did have it put together. So I don't know if there's a piece missing in the room here, but I need to figure that out. And when I figure it out, I'm going to hot glue it together so that it doesn't end up like this. So as you can see, I took down that one banner here. I'm going to have to put that back up. Otherwise in here, I'm not sure if I showed that before, that'll be like preschool artwork will hang up. And then really the only other change I did in here, well, right now there's only one table in here, so I will have to bring back the second table. But I added this little like camping scene. And I think since we're opening up in May and with it being the summer, I think I am actually going to leave this up through the summer because I definitely want it to, you know, we'll start preschool in the fall in here. So I figured during the summer months that we can be a little bit more relaxed. And then I want to figure out what I'm going to do with um, these shelves right here. I need to put back up my other letters for like the pre-K sign. But I have a metal shelf or a metal cabinet at home that I'm thinking about bringing here for the teacher stuff. So I may actually move those down. They're very heavy though, so I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully that will work out. And then in here, I've been using this as an art room. A lot of the stuff in here I have put into storage. That kitchen set that I originally had here, I did not like. So I'm gonna bring the one kitchen set for my house here and switch that out. And then obviously I'll have like the cots and stuff back. I'll probably take out one of these shelves because I don't think, I think one or two of these were in the preschool room. So I gotta figure that out. This is like a little Play-Doh area. 
Right now, this is just paints in here. I need to switch that back out to all their materials. I do like the little Play-Doh thing here with the table. And then the art area is the same in there. The gym is pretty much the same. I wanted to show you what I added in the bathroom. I know I've had comments on like doors for the bathroom stalls. And like I said, you couldn't do them because of the way this is. So I found these shower curtains on Amazon and I just like hung them up. So I think that's like a good solution for that problem. And then in here, again, during the past couple of months, I had taken down, like I had parents letter right there. And then I had staff letters right there. I'm going to put those back up. But I also got these picture frames from Walmart. These were like $4 each. And I wanted to do this originally anyways and hang them up on here and like have the staff pictures in there and stuff like that. So I got a bunch of those. And then in here, again, during open play, I brought in some of the things from the outside. So these will go back outside. So that'll go outside. And then I have these two things as well. And then I had covered up this little area. I love this, but I don't think I can keep it like this for licensing. I don't know. Maybe I can. I don't know if the kids would probably mess with it because I just wanted to kind of hide the things underneath it. But I figured it totally goes with the theme of the room. So I don't know. Maybe I'll be able to keep that up. I'll see there. And then in the infant room, I need to go back. Pretty much all the stuff is in storage. So these were those two tables that were in the preschool room. Those will have to go back. And then I had this in here. So as you can see, there's no cribs. This literally does not look like an infant room. Um, those two, actually, like the couch and that one chair was there. This would go back into the office and stuff like that. But look what's happening to my wallpaper. This keeps coming up right here. So I think I'm going to get like that spray adhesive and... That's what we did for that jungle room because that's like, I don't know, that's coming up right there. And then these shelves were in the office and I just had like decor on those. So those will probably go back in the office as well. So, but this was used as the party room when I've been doing birthday parties. I have one more party scheduled for the end of January. It's actually my neighbor. <laughs> so I didn't want to tell her no because I've had a lot of people want to reserve the space for parties in like February, March, but I don't want to. I just want to get it ready to reopen as a center. So I don't think I'm going to be doing any more birthday parties. And then the office is just kind of like a hot mess, as you can see. <laughs> yes, yes. Christmas stuff, Thanksgiving stuff, everything. So some of the changes I want to do, let's see here, starting in the kitchen. So I'm going to have to reapply in March for my food service license because you have to renew it every March. Well, right now I'm at like a level tier two because we were doing catering. Well, my sister's like the catering literally was not working out because by the time we would get back with the food, it wasn't like warm enough. And so we are going to go for a tier three where we can prep our own food here. It's like, so we can't have a stove here because I don't have the right like ventilation and stuff, but we can do like other kind of meals and stuff like that. I need to get a commercial microwave and I'm going to put a commercial freezer in here. I'm hoping that I can find one, like a small one that would go right there. Either I'm going to take off that shelf, maybe put like a commercial freezer in there. So those are some things I'm going to change in the kitchen. I have to have my annual fire inspection too in April. So I don't know what needs to be done with that. I think, I don't know if I have to bring someone in to look at all my fire um, extinguishers or if that's what the fire department does on top of it. And here in the gym, I guess I'll leave this how it is for right now. Like I said, I need to add back that divider. I wish that wall like was different, but it's not. So I think this is pretty much, you know, how it's going to stay. So not too many changes here. And then I realized I still, like, this is the one thing I never, like, finished. And it drives me nuts every time I see it. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have to paint it. So I definitely need to paint that. 
a lot of the stuff from my home daycare, I'm going to be donating the, my vintage toys in the home daycare, like the washer and dryer and the kitchen sets and stuff like that. I'm going to keep for future grandchildren because that's why I had bought that vintage stuff to begin with. But either I'm going to bring some of that stuff here or I am going to donate it. So I really wish I could replace this carpet, but we're not going to go there. Um, so that's it. That is what's going on here. One of the other things I wanted to talk about though is I am going to add on to the exterior signage. So I'll insert like a clip right here, that metal part that says learn to play. On the one side, I'm gonna add childcare and the other side, I'm gonna add preschool. Just so that it's definitely like people know <laughs> this is a preschool and childcare center. So I'm gonna get with the signage company that I used and come up with some designs for that. So that by May, that will be up as well. And then I think the outdoor play area, there's really like, I'm going to move some of the stuff that's in that toddler room back out there, but I don't really anticipate doing anything else to it. It's, it's fine. I believe the way that it is. So guys, that is the update. That's what's going on here. Um, I'm not sure when my next video will be or what it's even going to be about. <laughs> if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below on what you would like me to film or talk about, whether it be the home daycare or the center or whatever, you know. Um, I will probably take you along when I start revamping stuff in here and it probably won't be until like February. Oh, speaking of February, I am thinking that I want to get together with some local daycare owners. Um, one of the local daycare, she had put out a little message on like a Facebook daycare owners page about getting together and collaborating and networking and stuff like that. And I love that idea. So there are some local daycares in this area that are not franchised that are, I think even female owned. <laughs> and I would love to maybe set something up with that with them this February or March and just kind of bounce ideas off each other whether it be like marketing, um, how do you deal with staff issues and stuff like that? Because none of us, like the areas that we're all in, we're not competitors in a sense, you know, we're not in the same town and stuff like that. So I'm hoping that getting together with another, like with other groups of women and daycare owners, that it would be helpful, especially for someone like me, who's just starting out in this field. I know that a lot of people come to me for advice for the home daycare since I've been doing it four years. So I'm definitely wanting advice from people that have been doing, you know, an actual daycare center for a couple of years and pick their brains and stuff like that. So that's exciting. So I'm gonna look into doing that. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'm gonna be, you know, wrapping up with my families, um, getting ready to move. <laughs> this lovely stuff but the most important thing is is giving this center a hundred percent of you know me per se and really just trying to make a go of it and if the second round it still doesn't happen it still doesn't work out well at least I know then that I had given it everything that I have that I don't have the what ifs or could ofs and should ofs and stuff like that I know that I would have done everything that you know I wanted to do and that I could do. So thank you guys for following me on this journey this past year. It's so crazy. I I look around this place and this has just been like, if you would have told me this time last year, I was going to be in my own center and this and that, I definitely would not have believed it. <laughs> I would have been excited to know, but I would not have believed it. So with that being said, I hope everyone has a blessed and beautiful new year. Um, I wish everyone center daycare owners, home daycare owners, everyone a blessed, blessed year. And I will see you next year.